This is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. It's like it's a psychological, philosophical, spiritual, mental experience that's the totality of what you think you are as a human being, being translated into a new experience of yourself, which is no longer a body, no longer believing in death, no longer believing in separation, no longer believing in anything other than a whole new experience of yourself, which ends up being light. This course was sent to open up the path of light to us, to teach us, step by step, how to return to the eternal self we thought we lost. In this film, Jesus Christ of Nazareth and enlightened teachers like him will share the memory of their enlightenment and realization of Christ mind. You will be taken on a personal journey of individual awakening and resurrection and experience A Course in Miracles, the mind training program through which the real world is attained 
and true freedom from the bondage of space and time accomplished. I was given a course in miracles and it was the first thing that ever made sense to me that there was something beyond this world that was my reality and that God didn't know about this condition of suffering and sickness and death. A lot of the concepts and the ideas that were being expressed in the Course in Miracles, the fact that there is no world, the fact that reality is singular, the fact that there is no death, the fact that there is that I am totally responsible for everything I see and everything I experience. Energetically, I just knew that that was true. The Course in Miracles uh, study or our Miracles Recovery Program, we, we start out with different names, try to be creative, a way out, all these types of things. Uh, the program remains essentially the same, that uh, it's a, a program of spiritual recovery. I say it's a, a Christian-based uh, uh, spiritual recovery program, and that it's the only type program offered here at Dodge like that. Don't be afraid of what you might see. Open the book. Um, don't be afraid that it says nothing that I see means anything. <laughs> I opened it at random and it said, I need do nothing. I need do nothing. So I went and sat down and read it and I was crying. And I was so grateful. Because for the first time, I felt that I wasn't alone. I was not alone. I had an experience of Jesus being with me. And uh, I will never forget that experience because that opened up a new way for me in my life. Yada, my own start new mount in Gatsodo. The Vijam just pop come to this. Is the yet no blam no. It is it's a paranesensis pujin. But come a group of soup. You're a new way vircom, shin Gatsodo. But the Tabano should be so sad. Także to nie ja go znalazłam, to Jezus znalazł mnie. I wtedy wiedziałam, aha, to ty byłeś ze mną już wcześniej. Dzięki Bogu. So what is A Course in Miracles? A Course in Miracles is a direct communication from God through Jesus Christ indicating the apparent conditional situation between God and man, which is one of false separation, and the way in which that apparent separation is and was repaired. The sole purpose of A Course in Miracles is to bring enlightenment through the transformation of your mind. I have undergone a spiritual awakening experience. I have undergone an experience of enlightenment and a healing of my mind and body through a miraculous change of my mind. Now, this was part of a process that actually started um, when I was pretty young. I had experiences while I was growing up that um, showed me that there was a whole other way to think and live that was different than what you would call, you know, normal reality. Now, one of the key components of my awakening experience was A Course in Miracles. So this began 
like it probably did for a lot of people with uh, an experience of being a human being. Anything that I tried, I began to see how repetitive and small it was. It wasn't giving me any satisfaction anymore. And so this was a key turning point for me. One of the great lessons that I learned prior to my illumination and the idea that I could share through prayer, for example, the simple idea that there is a factor, a governing factor of eternal life that was not represented within my own time frame. That's the experience that I had. But it was brought about by the frustration that you must be beginning to feel about the idea that no matter what you do within this little limitation of, of body, you're going to get exactly the same result. That was part of my uh, journey that led to my illumination. The other part was a frustration I felt of wanting to journey to the stars, wanting to know what was out there, wanting to go beyond the parameters. I remember the this is in, in the 30s, and Shapley had come up with the idea that there were nebulas were actually galaxies of billions of stars. I was so fascinated by that, I would stand out and look, and I knew it was there. So I began to look at it within the factor of my own body identity, and anybody in their right mind would see immediately that I was being denied access to the universe by the simple procedure of being locked in this carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The idea that I would have to strap on a helmet in order to maintain a gravitational association myself to get to another planet was absurd to me. Not that I didn't enjoy the adventure of doing it, but the frustration that as I, the procedure in which I operated and identified as myself could not possibly travel to the stars. And I underwent an illuminate experience that I'm offering to you and that is offered to everyone who is on the threshold of the transformation of their mind in the realization of the inevitability that you, as a human, will have this experience because you are in the transition of having it. The idea of coming from time, the idea of separation, the idea that you were isolated in this little dark form and are beginning to have the experience of the entirety of you. When is it going to go on? Right here, right now. When did it go on? Right here, right now. What did it have to do with the world that I see out there? Nothing. I do clearly remember like being a baby and being held by my mother. I remember not being able to communicate and, and being fully aware and fully conscious and the feeling of being trapped and completely incapacitated, I guess you would say, was, so, was overwhelming. It was just like it began a whole idea in my mind of, of the limitation that I was in, being in a body or being in the world. The world you see is the delusional system of those made mad by guilt. Look carefully at this world and you will realize that this is so. For this world is the symbol of punishment and all the laws that seem to govern it are the laws of death. Children are born into it through pain and in pain. Their growth is attended by suffering and they learn of sorrow and separation and death. Their minds seem to be trapped in their brain and its powers to decline if their bodies are hurt. They seem to love, yet they desert and are deserted. They appear to lose what they love, perhaps the most insane belief of all, and their bodies wither and gasp and are laid in the ground and are no more. Every single one of them has thought that God is cruel. If this were the real world, God would be cruel, for no father could subject his children to this as the price of salvation and be loving. 
Love does not kill to save. All my life, I always felt like something was wrong, something was missing, and I thought it was in me, that there was some kind of lack, and I never could figure out what that lack was, but I felt guilty and ashamed for just being here, and I didn't understand why I felt that way. I ended up in a refugee camp in Croatia during the war in, the, uh, in former Yugoslavia, and met refugees from Bosnia, and I guess I've never forget that that image of that of that camp, of the condition that they were in. Like that was pretty horrible to me seeing like in their toilets where the shit was running down from the wall because the pipes were broken and there was nothing better to shelter them and they had nowhere to go. They no one no no country wanted to have them. And one particular image, which has never left my mind, is a uh, man walking and dragging his skin behind him like it was a shadow. Something about seeing that particular thing gave me no hope of finding happiness because I thought if this kind of thing is going on, all the time, somewhere, some, someone's suffering somewhere all the time. This isn't a place where I'll ever really experience peace. Then a critical moment happened when I was 15, my mother died. She, she, she got really sick and next thing she was gone, you know, she left her body. And that was like a really defining moment it was like a where this disillusionment with the world was was total i I just saw no purpose and no hope in the world where you know you lose the things you love, and my mother was no longer here, she was gone. This world you seem to live in is not home to you, and somewhere in your mind you know that this is true. A memory of home keeps haunting you, as if there were a place that called you to return, although you do not recognize the voice, nor what it is the voice reminds you of. Yet still you feel an alien here, from somewhere all unknown. Nothing so definite that you could say with certainty you are in exile here. Just a persistent feeling, sometimes not more than a tiny throb at other times hardly remembered, actively dismissed, but surely to return to mind again. I am offering you my certainty as we just read together, that you're an alien here, that you don't belong here, that the idea that you are separate from what everything is within this containment of space-time is not true, and that the light that you are beginning to reflect in your certainty of the converting nature of your conceptual identities will show you a new harmony that we share in a declaration that we intend to escape from space-time. These moments are in our, our, our really intense memories of what really my experience was of being in this world, being a human being with my relationships and my petty purposes. Yeah, loneliness. I would, I would feel lonely in, 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 in uh, cafes. I would feel lonely in crowds. And I would be, I was aware of that. And I thought, this is weird. This is weird. I see hundreds of people right now in, this, in a shopping mall, for instance, and I feel lonely. So looking back at those memories, I, I, I didn't see it then, but I, I didn't belong here. I didn't fit in. It didn't make sense. I never really felt that I fit in. I, was, I always felt that I was different. And even in my 
family home, I didn't feel like I fit in. And um, when I would go visit friends or family, I never wanted to go home because I never felt that that was really my home. I just wanted there to be something else because where I found myself in terms of my experience of myself, my family life, um, just the world I found myself in was simply not acceptable to me. Um, it was just not okay with me in any regard. And I desperately needed there to be some other reality, something else, some other place where I felt I belonged. I got really frustrated and really mad at God. I decided that it had to be His fault that I couldn't get back to that joy that He must be making me stay here in the life that I seem to be living in. It wasn't a life that I wanted even at seven years old. It's like, this need not be this way. I knew it need not be this way, that there had to be a much better way than this. And I had experienced that, and that was the experience I wanted. Everyone knows of what we speak. Yet some try to put by their suffering in games they play to occupy their time and keep their sadness from them. Others will deny that they are sad and do not recognize their tears at all. Still others will maintain that what we speak of is illusion, not to be considered more than just a dream. Yet who, in simple honesty, without defensiveness and self-deception, would deny he understands the words we speak. By the time I was 17, I knew that there was something so absolutely and fundamentally and completely wrong with this world that I basically wasn't able to just go on as everyone else, as all my friends were going on. I had experiences of just watching TV, of just, um, actually I was driving with a bicycle, that was a really big experience, I was driving with my bicycle in Berlin, um, down a road and there was an old folks home and every person was an old lady that was looking out the window and um, they had no expression in their face whatsoever. And they were just, out of every window, was one old woman looking out. And something happened where I couldn't just go on and just think about myself. Um, like, I had a hero bass player that I went to go see. And I saw that um, I was following the same path that he was. And in the instant, and, and as I was watching him, I saw the time collapse uh, of, to the completion of the idea that he was following. And he was sitting there playing bass and all of a sudden he literally started to turn to bones. He literally turned into bones in front of me and I went, oh my god, this is, this is my life. I'm simply going to do this and I see the end of my life right now. And I see what the result is going to be. And I'm seeing it right now. And as soon as you have an experience like that, you go, man, um, what am I doing? Like, what am I really doing? What is my purpose for? What am I really here for? There's no need for you to suffer from uh, that idea you have about yourself. There's no need for you to allow this world to tell you what you are. There's no need for you to react objectively with the idea that you are a body. The alternative that I am offering you now, within your own dream, will be so bright and real to you in this metamorphosis, in this awakening process, that at any moment uh, you right there are liable to spring into uh, eternal life.
there was a moment in my bathtub where I just simply asked, you know, God, I don't even know if there really is a God. Um, I had been practicing that there was a God, but really in my mind, I didn't really know if there was one. And I just said, Father, God, whatever you are, I need help. I'm simply experiencing uh, a feeling that I just, I don't want to carry on. I can't do this anymore. I can't maintain my life the way it's been. You really can't leave the world as long as you're happy with it. You have to get into an experience um, where you're not happy with where you find yourself. And you're really asking for more, that there's got to be more to life than this. And I looked at the ditch and I went like, I'm going in here and I'll never come out. I will not get up because there are no answers. It is impossible. I've tried everything to do what I was taught to do and it hasn't worked because I absolutely physically and mentally and emotionally, I was a wreck. I fell on my knees. I raised my arms to the heavens and I shouted, God, please help me. <laughs> that was a crucial moment. And at that time, I, my time was up. I got to the very, very bottom of my heart, to the very depths of my soul, and asked for help because I could not stand myself, my mind, or what appeared to be happening to me in the world. What if you recognize this world is an hallucination? What if you really understood you made it up? What if you realized that those who seem to walk about in it to sin and die, attack and murder and destroy themselves are wholly unreal? We really believe that we're in a world of separate bodies and separate time and separate space and separate people, separate ideas, separate minds, and we really behave as though we are in an objective reality but if I were to take an electron microscope or a subatomic sub particle zoomer and really look at you, what I would actually see is a wave of energy that's connected between you and everything else. Everything is literally this sea of energy that's swimming around and in some form of communication. The world you see has nothing to do with reality. It is of your own making and it does not exist. I suddenly saw what The Course of Miracles was really about for me. And it truly was getting that I'd made up this world, that this world was not real, that I was in a dream. And there was a reality beyond this, something wonderful. And one day, there was an amazing thing happening. In my mind, it was like inside out and outside, outside in. And suddenly I had like, wow, this is a dream here. I'm here just in a dream. Somehow I knew this is not real, all of a sudden. It was like this movie that I was watching and what am I doing here? You are at home in God, dreaming of exile, but perfectly capable of awakening to reality. Is it your decision to do so?
I'm just so grateful, but I want everything. I want full enlightenment. I want to wake up. I really needed to know what was going on, what the problem was, and how to get to, yeah, enlightenment. I knew somewhere that there was access to another experience, to another reality, you might say. And I wanted that more than anything. My experiences as a Christian, even as a Christian minister, uh, brought me to passages in the Bible, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I came to the realization that nothing was going to change out there. It was like the turning point came in my mind when I realized the change had to occur within my own mind. And from that moment on, I was driven by the idea of transformation of mind. So anything I could get my hands on to read, workshops, that's, that's, that was it. Just transformation of mind. I needed help. So I spent years doing that. And you know what? It didn't work. <laughs> it just didn't work. I just, you know, finally I, I just threw all the books away. Nothing worked. And I was devastated. And I woke up one morning and I actually prayed. And I can remember this prayer like I just said it, which I did, and it was, God, please help. I want to know what love is. I don't know, but I'm ready for you to show me. Asking for help was the turning point for me. That's where A Course of Miracles came in to my awareness. And it was just around that time that The Course in Miracles came into my life. And the book landed in my lap, and I opened the book, and I started to read it. There was an energetic um, spark in me, and I instantly knew that this was an answer. This was the answer. The process is a beautiful thing because you always hear about renewing the mind, but actually learn, going through a process that actually helps you to do it, that, that really helped me the most. And that was the most beautiful thing about The Course in Miracles. The Course tells me some people get it by sudden experiences, some people get it by going to the point of death and then coming back from that. Many, many people get it by a virtue of doing the workbook. In certain respects, I've had uh, all three experiences, but mostly it has been by doing the lessons of the workbook, by staying focused and attentive to what it is that the Course is offering me. The introduction to the workbook of A Course in Miracles says specifically that the ideas that are being expressed in the Course that I need not necessarily 
accept them. I need not believe them. Uh, some of them I may even actively resist. None of this matters. I just need to practice the ideas, just apply the ideas. Um, and that that would be enough to prove or to demonstrate to me that they are true. I started practicing the workbook, but I didn't understand any of it. I didn't understand what lessons one, you know, nothing I see means anything. I didn't know what any of that meant, but I didn't really care because I was at a point of um, knowing I'd found something that I'd been looking for for a very long time. Um, and so I, I started getting very excited um, and worked the workbook day and night, just as it directed me to do. And I was started to get happy, and my fear started to disappear. And I can even say that within six months, um, I, I felt fearless for the first time in my whole life. It felt to me, when I began to read the lessons, like somebody had entered into my brain and was moving my brain around. And I was terrified. It terrified me. I was totally terrified. It wasn't anything that I wanted to do. And I didn't know what to do. It was very clear to me that it was something that came from outside of this frame. The authority was unmistakable. And it was very obviously Jesus Christ speaking. And that scared me even more. Because I, I always saw Jesus as a very hard taskmaster who could accomplish something that nobody could possibly hope to match. The first lesson of A Course in Miracles is nothing I see means anything. And when she said that, I immediately began to go, that cup doesn't mean anything. That, And I just began to apply the lesson to the things that I saw around me. And I immediately had sort of a, I can't explain it except sort of like a, like one of those, oh my goodness, you know, it was, it, something was sort of moving in me. And that was the most incredible experience because by the time I had done that lesson five times, something happened. And I can't explain what it was, but something changed in me because I followed the directions. I opened it up at the first lesson and it said, nothing I see means anything. And it was as if my entire universe relaxed. I was so happy. Amazing. progress that you have made in training your mind in a systematic way to a new way of looking at yourself in the world has reached the point, very simply, if you've been sharing with my mind this Course in Miracles, that you're going to have to uh, admit to an experience 
Remember that a, a course in miracles is an indication of a procedure where you can come to know the truth of universal mind through the change in yours, since your mind represented the split mind or the idea that there could be separate uh, forms of reality outside of you. It was like an experience of like a revelatory experience all the time because my mind was being corrected, my thinking process was being corrected and I saw that everything that I did was so upside down. And suddenly my mind was different. I, I was in this state of complete peace and it was really still and I could see my thoughts. They were just floating by like clouds and they had no effect on me whatsoever. I had a physical experience of light that only now I can describe as light. That was completely cellular, a complete unraveling of every cell, just popping into a new light experience. And I don't know how that offset my mind to the degree that it did, but I saw I couldn't die at this point. The answer's here, I have no goal, nowhere to go, and when I looked back, when I looked at all of human history, I thought it was just a story in my mind. I... I got realigned, I don't have another word for it, I, I, I have, I felt, I was redirected back on my path, on my recognition, on my passion, on the sense of being here at all. And um, it was so intense, it was physical. And again, this old thing was knocking on my shoulder, it was also fearful. But, oh my God, purpose, sense of direction, fulfillment, it immediately filled me up. It just filled me up. I knew what I, why I was here. I had a reason, I had a purpose. It was spectacular. And as I do the workbook lessons and apply the ideas, it becomes more and more tangible as an experience that the world I see has nothing to do with reality. It is of my own making and it does not exist. And just behind this world of apparent separate forms and chaos, there literally is a world of light in which everything is unified. I guess you could call it the quantum field. And the beautiful thing that occurred in my awakening is that all of these ideas suddenly made sense to me and they all came together as one whole experience. Whether it be the Course or the quantum experience, the quantum theories, or the Bible, the New Testament. Suddenly, all of this, even the Eastern teachings, became one whole experience of myself coming to know the truth of who I am. The mind training of A Course in Miracles is the awakening of consciousness. It is the awakening of my true self.
all I had to do was say, above all else, I want to see things differently. I don't know how, um, but that's what I want. I don't want this conflict, and I don't want this um, separation anymore. And, um, and it's possible not to have it? Okay, show me. What's actually occurred in your enlightenment of body form is a purpose for being here. Will you share that with me, human? When you examine all of the accomplishments that you make within the formulation of this little place in space-time, all of your purposes through achievement of the idea of yourself has always only led to death. What's occurred in this new arrangement of space-time that we now share are nothing but a new purpose for being here. Now, the entirety of your new representation with me is very simply to escape from space-time, okay? Because the invention of space-time are the procedure by which you identify yourself in location in this little hovel of death. So the lessons that we're employing, like, above all else, I want to see differently. I renounce death at this moment. I'm determined to see differently, are being shared by this new continuum of time that represent our certainty of love for each other. But I remember I was in a class and the teacher looked at me and said, I'm going to take death away from you. Now at the time, I mean, I had no idea what was going on. Apparently this was a class on A Course in Miracles. And the teacher looked right at me and I literally laughed out loud. And all I remember is I was in a place in the back of my mind and there was a door which was partially open. And it was shown to me that this was, this was how I get out of here. When things get too rough, I, I will use this door to slip out of this particular sequence. And what happened is the door closed, and my very first thought was, how the hell do I get out? How do I get out now? The way you get there, the way out of this box of time and space, is that you let go of all those ideas of a story. Wow, that's incredible. It's a course in miracles. A course in training my mind to recognize that the thoughts that I hold in my mind are giving me a result of what I want to see. And that if I decide, I can change what I see and how I experience myself and experience something entirely new. Something has to happen in me, like an evolution in my mind. I realized that what I thought about myself and what I thought of what reality was, was holding me back and was holding me and imprisoning me in this cycle of living and dying. My experience now, after doing this for, for a while, is that I'm the one who's telling the world what it is, and my experience will be what I let the world be. And I don't want to see anymore um, a world which is excluded from myself. 
So I cannot uh, find a nice place in my mind and excluding dark places I see out there. You have to include everything in because the mind is striving for integration because there's only one mind and that's the mind of God. And I, if I'm real, if I'm alive, then it, I must be a part of that. The thing that shifted things absolutely and totally, which was the realization that the responsibility and that reality was only my own mind and only my own thoughts. And then when that and when that shifted and when I realized that I didn't have to try to save anything outside of myself but that everything outside of myself was already in me and was just a, pro a product of my own consciousness then things ha started to move fast. And that's where the Course really began to, to, to show me that it was all me. And I was, it was my responsibility. It takes a while to realize that, it's, that, you, that you're really projecting that world. That that world is coming totally from, from your mind, from my mind. Yes. I give everything that I see the meaning that it has for me. Because it's all going on only for me. What my experience has been in my awakening, in my healing, is, is that I am responsible. Um, I'm responsible for everything that happens to me, and I'm really responsible for, for everything I experience. Um, and the Course has brought about a change, a change in my, my, um, my consciences, a change in how I, uh, how I perceive the world and everyone in it. No matter how much I've tried to discuss this situation, no matter how much I've tried to discuss and philosophize the idea of transformation of the mind, it doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't matter how many miracles I've seen, how many wondrous article events I've, I've witnessed, it doesn't mean a thing unless I am willing to change my mind. And through the change of my mind, I'm starting to see this world differently. <laughs> What keeps the world in chains but your beliefs? And what can save the world except yourself? Belief is powerful indeed. The thoughts you hold are mighty. And illusions are as strong in their effects as is the truth. A madman thinks the world he sees is real. 
and does not doubt it. Nor can he be swayed by questioning his thoughts' effects. It is but when their source is raised to question that the hope of freedom comes to him at last. Yet is salvation easily achieved, for anyone is free to change his mind, and all his thoughts change with it. Now the source of thought has shifted, for to change your mind means you have changed the source of all ideas you think, or ever thought, or yet will think. You free the past from what you thought before. You free the future from all ancient thoughts of seeking what you do not want to find. The present now remains the only time. Here in the present is the world set free, for as you let the past be lifted and release the future from your ancient fears, you find escape and give it to the world. And your only way out of this dream, this bad dream of fear, is forgiveness. It's an impossible teaching, and yet it is the only way out. And I knew that my problem was also that I couldn't really forgive, and this was also the problem why I was not free, because I did not know how I yeah, how, how I should let go of certain things I thought someone really did to me. I was given another glimpse at how I can leave this place. And finally, that was... And that was forgiveness. All of a sudden, I just realized, it was like, it was whispered in my ear that I didn't have to wait on anything. That there was no time needed in order for that to be healed. And immediately my brother was standing there with me. It was totally amazing. He was right there with me. Like, I wanted him to experience what I was experiencing because I could feel... I could feel the pain that he was in. And I... And it was my pain. And bam, he was right there with me. And I literally experienced grabbing his hand and just completely leaving this whole place. <laughs> And in that moment, my whole entire life experience with him came back to me, was present with me, and I absolutely knew who he was and who I was. And I knew that we were together, and that there was no death, and that there was no time, no space between us. And I found myself Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It does not pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin, and in that view are all your sins forgiven. What is sin except a false idea about God's Son? Forgiveness merely sees its falsity and therefore lets it go. What then is free to take its place is now the will of God. There was an experience at the Millennium Peace Conference, uh, the Association of Japanese that were representing some problems they're having with their children and the need for love and forgiveness. And I remembered so well within my mind the uh, 
recognition of the devastation that was at uh, the atomic bomb area in 1945, uh, when I stood where there had been uh, 100,000 people uh, that were gone, and I recognized the ambivalence of, as a young Marine of knowing that the war, or the war had not been ended because of this. There was an occurrence that I shared with a former enemy, I haven't told this story where I sat together with an enemy uh, of which I knew his capacity to defend his country, having been evident to me in combat in South Pacific. I was certain of his capacity to dedicate himself entirely to the honor of his mind. And we sat together in the recognition of that power and forgave each other in the recognition of the solution we found. That was the beginning of my discovery of singularity within my own heart and mind. Can you feel that experience with me? I want you to, because at least at that time it gave me a relief in the recognition that what had been my enemy had now become my friend. That's the offering that I'm giving to you in the service of my mind to yours. If we will lay down our defenses Okay, as we no longer attack each other, the power of peace and love will emerge in us in that recognition. What happened was I recognized all of the love that had been offered to me all through my life, and I had refused to accept. It was like I was given a life scan where each and every player in my life I was able to receive the gift that they had given me. This is the experience of forgiveness. Right as we were on the bus coming to the final performance, um, I just came completely undone. I suddenly felt a moment of total forgiveness wash over me, and it was like I saw every person for the first time all of the things we'd been through, the conflicts, the frustrations, the struggle, the hard work, was completely washed away in this moment. And all I felt for each and every one of them was just pure love. And I knew then that forgiveness has nothing to do with what anyone has done, but it's a present recognition. And that's what I would like to share with you because that is what is real. And that is what is available to us all the time. And that is what I found in A Course of Miracles. And I realized there was a God. And I realized that nobody has ever done anything to me. And that literally my parents were completely innocent. They were completely innocent. So I went to her and said, Mommy, Will you forgive me? And she looked at me and she said, Darling, there's nothing to forgive. Wow. It dawned on me, my God. I can't hold grievance. My favorite grievance that I'd been cherishing for so many years was literally taken away. I couldn't justify in my own mind holding it anymore. And as soon as I realized that, it was just gone. I found God in that moment. I was back into that euphoric state that I had had as a child. Literally, that's what forgiveness does. It just takes this whole thing away and you find a different state of mind. I mean, plenty of times I've been walking down the street angry or just sitting on my bed in no special mood at all. And then all of a sudden, this light, this love, dawns on my awareness. And the only way, the only thing I can attribute that is just willingness. There's just a gift of understanding and a gift of release, a gift of forgiveness. There's nothing else. There's nothing else going on but just that. And everything is included.
I didn't have any idea that that sentence, that that idea would make forgiveness completely possible. And unlike any forgiveness, any pardoning of something that someone else had done to me in order to buy my way into heaven. <laughs> when I read that line that it was really nothing here to forgive, I mean, like, give me a moment to at least uh, make a list of whom I should get, forgive or what I should forgive. After that awakening, I realized that you would be here forever doing that. It's always over. Every moment, it's always over. It's a fresh opening. It's always an awakening. Every moment is an awakening. I just really long for the experience that the Course was, was talking about. I really long to have that experience of awakening. I had no idea that this was going to be physical. I mean, I thought it was going to be some mental thing that I was going to get that was going to just make me feel so good about myself and about the world. What a surprise. I mean, it was nothing like I thought. One of the first things that happened with me was that I started doing the lessons of A Course in Miracles not having any idea what they meant. I read the text like it was a book, like most people would read a book, over like four or five days. Didn't understand a word of it. And then I started having these experiences. That initial occurrence was completely beyond anything I had ever experienced as this human being, as I knew myself. Through this experience, I, and in this experience, I realized that minds are joined. That's what the experience actually was, that minds are joined. And that there is only mind, that there is nothing else. So I could say that everything is one in truth. So that was the beginning of my awakening, which I call the big one, or you could call it in the Christian vernacular, you could call that uh, being born again. I'm sure there's all sorts of mystical associations evolved with that. But what happened to me physically is that my crown chakra opened, I guess. That's another idea. And I started having light experiences and being released into the universe instead of being contained in my little form which was making me very unhappy, because it's not a natural state. Went through the process, and this huge crack that went through the top of my head and down, the, down my forehead uh, woke me up, so to speak. The minute I let go, I am given even more. I'm just shown more, and more, and more. And then I experienced myself as energy and it was beautiful, but my mind was now um, in an action of extension that it just wanted more and more because now, it start, now I started discovering myself as pure mind. And that led to an experience of beyond the body. I found myself in experiences of light 
and happiness and joy that has absolutely nothing to do with this world or this place at all. Completely lifted out. I had, you know, just experiences that went out of this world. They disoriented me so much because they turned my whole world absolutely upside down. Everything that I thought was real was not real. There was a particular moment when it opened up so dramatically, there's no way that I could put words to it. But in the middle of the experience, I realized I was having an experience of joy and that I had never experienced joy before. I was having an experience that had nothing to do with this world. It was perfect. It took me in a point in my heart and in my mind where I saw the love that I was sharing with my brother. And in that moment, all the pain, all the suffering, disappeared. And boom, here I was. There was, here there was a guy. He was speaking about an experience. He was speaking about the light. And, and it was just like it did one more in my head. It was just like, oh, I, I heard that. I know what he's talking about. I was like wide awake. There was no time. There was no, there was no people. There was, there was only God. They were, I was living, I've been living in total grace. And it took me a while, you know, to get my orientation back and to start to incorporate the things that were happening into this, because they didn't have anything to do with this world. There's no way I could even tell you about them because there are no human words to describe the experiences that I was having. It's not that I couldn't tell you, it's that it's impossible to tell you. <laughs> and it's fantastic and it's, it's, it's out of this world. It's truly out, not of this world at all has nothing really to do with this world. So I have no other purpose now except to say, no, there's something else going on. And it's something absolutely magnificent. It's beyond your wildest dreams. What has happened to me has been a shift from an experience of, of myself and identity as a body to really recognizing myself as, um, as light and that my understanding of everything that has occurred to me has occurred to me because of the light that has been associated with it. And it, it isn't that uh, my ideas 
and memories went away, but they all began to uh, constellate in a new manner around the central idea of light that was permanent now. It was like a window opened and that it always stayed there in my mind. And the, other, and the thoughts that I used to think, while they were still there, they began to organize in a new way to facilitate a new purpose, or in fact, the only true purpose that I've been able to see in this world. And that is a purpose of going to the light and stepping beyond the form altogether. I had absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, I felt the, uh, I, I don't even know what it was, and now I know that it was light. <laughs> it literally came down through the top of my head. And the next words out of my mouth were, I, I didn't have to drink anymore. So I began to experience light energy for the first time. I began to experience an energy that was vibrant and alive. And I began to, to experience myself as light. I, I began to experience my mind as being more fluid and free than what I previously did before. And then I started having huge light experiences. And by huge light experiences, I mean where I was just an, a, a total explosion of light. And I hoped that these would not come at inappropriate times. <laughs> and, and Jesus got Thank you, Jesus. They never did. They never did. Um, everything did, as Jesus says in the Course, keep gentle pace with my awakening. I had an experience of light, like energy that, that I felt. And actually, that's when I felt that energy, that's when suddenly the Course made sense to me. Suddenly, the sentences, they became real. Like, they were a part of me. It was not something outside of myself, but it was like, oh, I had the experience, and suddenly I read my experience. And then everything that was expressed in the Course in Miracle was, was part of me. And, and from then on, oh man, it, it just started to get better and better and better and expand and expand. And, and then I actually started to love myself, which I never thought was possible. This is an extraordinary experience. It's an experience that can't be explained. Obviously, it's an experience. So, The Course in Miracles is a living thing to me. It's me discovering myself. It's a living document. The light experience on, on a day like today is not different than that one I had 15 years ago. The quality of the light is exactly the same. And yet you can describe what's happened since then as a evolution or a maturation or a, simply a, a change in my ability to extend the light as my association has been purified through constant reference to the light. And that's what the lessons of A Course in Miracles are, this constant reference to this solid light idea. And it was just like a holographic ex experience. Like it was just in one instant, I got a download of what this is. And I knew in my heart and my bones and my whole body that I found something that's really true. <laughs>
and and that I was taken care of somewhere. I'm on the right track. My entire uh, desire to commit suicide was gone from my mind. And like a, this devastating cloud that was hanging over my head was just like lifted. And I, I was, it just went away. And I, I thought that was amazing. I had nothing to do with that, that change in my mind. And that, I guess you could call that the, the, the first really profound miracle for me. I'm free today. I'm free of those of that fear and the anger and the, the the judgment, which is which is how I live my life at every moment prior to uh, to my awakening experience. My whole idea of about life, everything was changed. I completely changed my mind about everything. It didn't matter what the doctors thought. It didn't matter what the nurses thought. It didn't matter what anyone thought. I knew that something miraculous had happened to me and my life was completely changed. I realized that God was always there. He had never left me. There was a power and light and a presence and a bliss and a purity which I knew was me. It, I wasn't, I hadn't died. I came alive. Everything that looked separate in space and time really wasn't true. It was, there was a whole uh, field of energy or a reality that was totally unifying that's going on simultaneously and I, I'm never apart from that. All I can say is something really remarkable has happened and the story I've just told you doesn't do justice to what has happened to me. And now I am really blessed. I'm so grateful for what has been offered me. A way home. Because I know that everything is light. <laughs> and that the light is in everything. And it's, and it's just an experience that I got because I'm doing the Court of Miracles. And, yeah, and the way it looks doesn't really matter, like it's unique for every one of us. And for me it's been really unique and I, it's, it finally always comes down to the acceptance of my own innocence. The love of God is all around me. It's, it's everywhere that I go. At every moment I'm never apart from, well, as the Course says, if you knew who walked with you. <laughs> This is all I ever need, is the love that is sustaining for me, the love of God. If you want to know the truth, you're going to find it. You're sincere, you want to know the truth, so it's inevitable. I don't know how long it's going to take you, it's going to take you as long as it takes you, but you're going to find out the truth simply because you sincerely want to, for no other reason. But you've got to want it above all else. There is nothing to fear 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 there is nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear.
practice periods will be very short, very simple and very frequent. You can use it with your eyes open at any time and in any situation. Use the idea immediately should anything disturb your peace of mind. There is nothing to fear There is nothing to fear There is nothing to fear There is nothing to fear, is nothing to fear. 